welcome to Stories of the Rebound with Larry Blumenfeld, where we invite musicians to talk about their work and reflect on what music means in this moment, how musicians and artists alike are inventing new ways of engaging with the world. This is such an unusual moment for all of us, a moment that we don't really have any frame for. Um, and one thing about it is that whatever it is we're all dealing with, whatever it is we're each dealing with in this situation, um, in this pandemic situation, we can't get together and commune through live music. We can't share that. And in almost every other disturbing or disorienting instance in my life, that's been one option. So uh, let me, let me ask you, where, where was the last time that you performed live or that you experienced music live before we shut all this down? Ironically, I was supposed to have a show two Sundays ago that was on the cusp of the whole uh, kind of like non-essential businesses were not necessarily shut down yet, but it was a sort of a cusper. So I called off the gig, but I would say before that, it was a week prior. Um, I performed at Rockwood Music Hall with a singer-songwriter project of mine called Everything Turned to Color, and it was the sold-out show um, at Rockwood 3, and it, it, was, it was lovely. It was great. Um, but yeah, that's, I'm holding that memory closely right now. And of course, at that moment, you had no idea that... No idea. Right. Uh, do you remember the last thing that you heard in terms of hearing live music before... Yes, I went to National Sawdust, um, I think it was three weeks ago, and I saw um, the, rag, the Brooklyn Raga Massive, the Women's Raga Massive, put this beautiful show on, and um, Rupa Mahadevan sung, and um, I'm forgetting her name now, but there was um, a spoken word poet who shared her, um, who shared some passages from her poetry, and it, it was sort of like the cusp as well, where we weren't sure Mm -hmm. If it would be one of the last shows, so there was something a little bittersweet about that too. It was it was really beautiful, and that was sort of the last time I think we we knew we were going to see each other for a while. You know, we're both we both live in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, it seems like you know our paths overlap a lot here. I know one one small venue that's important to both of us is Barbez, which is just a walk from my home. Um, yeah, the, living and working in a situation where you can just show up, hey, I'll go out here and catch this person's thing here. Oh, you're performing here. Maybe you'd like to come perform with me here. What, is it, what does it feel like to have, you know, to be a creative musician and have that suddenly cut off? Um, it's, it's hard. I think I spent the majority of last week sort of morning. Um, I think I've been reading a lot and people are talking about this as a form of grief and I definitely ex have experienced grief in this process. But I also think that if I can put that aside, there's also been a lot of beauty that I've seen over the last few weeks um, in terms of just friends and artists coming alive online and singing, sharing their music, getting together with Raquel and other singers. Um, so there's been that solidarity too, which has been really special. Yeah, that's kind of what, what I was getting at. I mean, on the one hand, yes, there's a lot for us to either grieve or, or get morbid about or just get scared about. But, yeah. but I do think there's also this, I feel like there's this renewed appreciation, first of all, of what that whole sense of community that we're being denied right now means. Um, I mean, how, would your music have the shape and sound that it has now were it not for these places in this community that you walk in? I don't, I think that it's definitely influenced by the community and there's so much, there's, there's so many people out in the musical community in New York doing so many different things. So there's always that spark of kind of like, oh, I want to take this from that, or I feel inspired by this, or this person's doing trap, or this person's singing, you know, doing rap. And so, yeah, I absolutely think that while I started with jazz, I think, you know, I've been so influenced by the community and in different ways, I'm, continued, I'm continuing to be inspired 
inspired by the community, surprisingly through, through all these social channels online. Um, I'm just like, I'm sort of astounded by how, how much of a connection I still feel. Yeah, I, I mean, it does seem like there's a new energy to what's possible, I mean, by, by necessity, but what's possible online and, and how people can, you know, it's also kind of revealing in an interesting way. I mean, people playing from their living rooms or, yeah. I mean, have yeah. you been experimenting with this? I haven't, I have been recording um, recently. I've just been finding my way back to old jazz standards. Um, and I've just been recording myself singing old standards on my ukulele and um, sharing them. So yeah, I haven't done anything live, but it's, that's bringing me a lot of solace. What joy. song, what songs, if I may? Um, but I just did a version of Body and Soul and um, Manha de J Carnival by mm -hmm. Louis Bonfa. Mm -hmm. um and so yeah i you know I, I was thinking maybe i'll brush off stardust today or tomorrow okay right stuff you might not do at a gig yeah exactly you know and um i think what i've loved about this i mean what i've seen through this is i think as a as a musician in new york it's so easy to be like i'm this kind of musician i'm a singer songwriter i'm a jazz musician who mainly works in avant in with avant-garde jazz or i do trad jazz and i think there has been this through this experience there's been this like sort of leveling like first and foremost we're all musicians you know there's it, there's been less of like this uh sort of barrier i feel like or of, of like you're in this genre i'm in this genre we're just all together yeah yeah and i i agree with you i feel like i mean most of my coverage and most of my writing happens in what people would call the jazz world but more and more in the community that i write about and that i walk in those those definitions are falling away and it's most more defined by people's associations and their common interests but it is interesting this this situation where now you you're free of all those trappings it's just you yeah. know turn it on what are you going to do um, have you been, is there anyone, anything in particular that you've seen or heard online that has moved you in this, in these little quarantine moments? Um, my, um, my friend Josh Dunn, who is a beautiful gypsy jazz guitarist, um, did a cover of a song with, um, I I'm not, I'm forgetting her name, but I, um, I will look it up after and I can send it to you. Um, and they somehow use some technology where there's, he's in Australia, she's in New York, and they did something where they were able to use technology to, he can accompany her. And just the way she sung it, I don't know this, this singer, she does live in New York, and I just, I listened to it four or five times. It's just something about the way they played together and her voice was very, very moving. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not, I, and I almost feel like, we've been talking about people have been talking about technologies online capabilities file sharing abilities that you know have a lot of potential for music making and music sharing that's nothing new but i do feel almost like you know music and creativity is like water it will find its own place it will always find its way and right now there is no other way so what creativity happens that way what can you tell me a little bit about what you've shared here with music on the rebound what music yes. you're sharing with us yes so i wrote this song called nature's song um last year and the song is an exploration of a, our dialogue with nature um and i think living in the city it's very easy to feel disjointed from the world of nature um, I think often we think that we get a lot from nature, but we don't necessarily understand that there's this symbiosis, that nature is getting something from us too, if we give to it. Um, and I think it, it just felt apropos, um, especially right now with everything, you know, we're confined to our homes. Some of us are confined in the city. We don't have the opportunity to really go outside and be. Um, and when I go out for my evening runs, I'm just, 
I'm seeing so many more people outside than I normally do. And it's sort of just a reminder that nature is so powerful, like in our, in our soul, in our psyche. And it felt important for me to kind of share that. Yeah, I think we all, we all have a different appreciation of that right now. Um, yeah, does, it, does that song feel different to you now, right now than it might have when you, well, when did you perform it in the video? Uh, it was last April, um, so a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, I think initially when I wrote it, I wrote it thinking about how sometimes we look at people who live solitary in nature as if they're sort of, we can't understand them as if they're sort of like separated from us. And I think over the last, it's interesting how a song can change meaning for you, even mm -hmm. as you've written it. And I think in the last few weeks, it sort of, it just took on a new meaning for me. Um, and, and that was, it was nice to revisit it in that way.